Agree. Welcome to the Diaspora Webinar Series. Make welcome your host, Mr. Kayode Okikiolu. Our special guest of honor, Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, GCON, SAN, represented by the Executive Secretary and CEO, Nigeria Investment Promotion Council, NIPC, Ms. Yewande Saliku, the Chief Host, Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele, our host, the Managing Director, And guess what? We can help you get them. So it's my singular honor to welcome you to this first of its kind event brought to you by the leading financial institution in Nigeria, Fidelity Bank, PLC. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you are live at the inaugural Diaspora webinar series. We like to call it your bridge between the diaspora and home. My name is Kayode Okikulu, and together with Rotus, as you have seen, we will be your guide at this event. Are you ready? Well, the new CBN FX policy is no doubt going to be a game changer for diaspora investments in Nigeria. And we do not want you honestly to miss out on the great opportunities. So today we have an impressive lineup of some of the minds that are the very best both in government and the private sector. And we did this just for you. And I promise you, this will be worth every minute of your time. After all, we are fidelity. We keep our word. So to kickstart this event, I'd like to welcome the visionary behind this idea. She is a celebrated banker in Nigeria and beyond, a woman breaking barriers and expanding the frontiers of banking. She has been an integral part of a transformation team at Fidelity Bank PLC for the last six years. She was formerly the executive director, Lagos and Southwest, overseeing the bank's business in the six states that make up the Southwest region. But that's not all. She led the transformation of the directorate to profitability, and she sustained our impressive year-on-year -year growth across key performance indicators, contributing over 28% of the bank's PVC deposits and loans. But that's not all. So it's a wonder she's made history by becoming the very first female MD and CEO of Fidelity Bank PLC. And by that, she is encouraging millions of Nigerian girls and women to be their very best. So ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome with me this afternoon, Mrs. Ineka Onyali Ipe for her opening speech. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Professor Yemi Oshibanjo our special guest of honor today, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Dr. Godwin Emefile, our keynote speaker and chief host today, our speakers, the president of Afrexim Bank, Professor Oke Orama, the chairman, Nigerian Diaspora Commission, Mrs. Abike Dabiri Ewera, Professor Ndubisi Ekekwe, Professor Oluwale Suleiman, Alistair Soyade of Ben TV, distinguished ladies and gentlemen who have also joined us across the world. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all to this maiden edition of the Diaspora Webinar organized by Fidelity Bank today. Nigerians are arguably the most traveled black people in the world. Unofficial reports state that there are about 15 million Nigerians in diaspora. 
This is more than the population of many countries in the world. Just recently, my team and I were discussing and came across, uh, came to the observation that there are Nigerians possibly everywhere in the world, including far-flung locations like Iceland and Australia, and that anywhere that you don't see Nigerians, probably there's nothing happening there. So Nigerians abroad remit monies back home, and the domestic economy has benefited immensely from this, our, our citizens in diaspora, as well as knowledge transfer, medical and educational supports in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the past years. Available World Bank statistics shows that after 2020, the aggregate remittances to Nigeria exceeded the 20 billion mark. Precisely between 2013 and 2019, our citizens in the diaspora remitted an estimated $152 billion into the country. The World Bank estimates that, estimates that in 2018, the developing countries received about some 7% of the total inflows of 529 billion into India, China, Mexico, the Philippines, Egypt, and Nigeria. These countries were the largest recipients. And this country, these countries I just mentioned collectively accounted for about 40% of these inflows. This chain is a very important, this um, inflows and uh, diaspora remittances that is obviously a very important segment that we cannot lose sight of. Available research also shows that in Mexico, for example, that for every $2 billion that comes into the country through remittances, production and the economy is increased by $6 billion. Nearly 30% of the remittances are used for the purpose of investment and construction of countries in countries like Ghana as well. Having said that, we feel that the Nigerian, the impact of the inflows, diaspora inflows and remittances in Nigeria has a multiplier effect as well in consumption, investment, and economic growth in Nigeria. And experts have also suggested that remittances, uh, um, diaspora remittances is the new oil for Nigeria. That explains why our bank fidelity has ensured a robust participation in the activities of our diaspora con communities in America, namely the Nigerian diaspora organization NIDO, Nigerian Association of Pharmaceuticals and uh, Pharmacists in the uh, Americas, NAPSA, and the Association of Physicians in the Americas, ANAPA, amongst others, and also various social cultural groups like the World Ibo Congress and Egba Oma Omo Odudua. We are here today to discuss the modalities of diaspora remittances as well as the awareness of investments opportunities in Nigeria. For example, our diaspora mortgage product has been accessed by many Nigerians in diaspora to acquire homes in Nigeria. There are several investment vehicles in Nigeria, such as fixed income securities, private equity opportunities in companies, where it, has, where it is on record that you are able to achieve returns of between, 15, between 10 and 15 and 20% year on year. You can also invest in urban and infrastructure renewal projects, as well as private and public partnerships, PPPs, and of course, modernized agriculture amongst several. As an innovative bank, our digital link on several IMTO sites ensure that their parents can open both Naira and dollar accounts in 10 minutes and remit funds to Nigeria. Our private banking team are readily available to handhold all interested persons or mortgages to avoid scams. As part of measures to promote transparency and grow diaspora remittances, which will obviously improve um, significantly uh, FX inflows into Nigeria, the Central Bank of Nigeria recently introduced a new FX policy. We as a bank in fidelity are in full compliance of the policy and we're working with our 17 already registered uh, uh, international money transfer operators to ensure that they're in full compliance of the modalities that have been stated by the government. The efforts by the CBN to increase liquidity in the foreign exchange market 
through this new policy on diaspora remittances is well intentioned and it explains why we have decided to host this seminar today to deepen the understanding of this policy and the impact. Because we believe that when people are armed with adequate knowledge, they are able to make informed decisions, the esteemed presence of the vice president, of the vice president and the governor of the central bank and our distinguished guests underscore the importance of this event today. Please permit me to thank the Vice President for making our time to participate in this program. On behalf of the management board and staff of Fidelity, we thank you very much. We also specially acknowledge our visionary governor of the central bank, Mr. Godwin Emefile, who has been very supportive of Fidelity Bank and his efforts in steering the ship in this challenging times and out of recession. I also want to acknowledge and appreciate our guest speakers, Professor Oke Orama, the chairman and president of Afrexim Bank, and our pride on the world stage. I also want to acknowledge erudite Professor Ekekwe, an inventor, an engineer, an author, and an entrepreneur. Also, Professor, Professor Suleiman, a distinguished surgeon, making, our, making us proud in the United States. We also want to acknowledge uh, Honorable Abike Dabiri Erewa, our, M our M Amazon, who has given a new face to the diaspora in this narrative in Nigeria, as well as Mr. Alistair Soride, our Nigerian entrepreneur, who has, who has ensured that Nigeria and Africa's voice is heard in the UK and beyond. We are indeed here for a very robust engagement this afternoon. It is my hope that after this webinar, our country will witness an increased inflow and hopefully signal better opportunities for investment in Nigeria. We also are able to develop a holistic diaspora strategy that will improve the confidence of Nigerians abroad and the financial system and investment climate in our country. Thank you and please enjoy this event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Managing Director. Well, thank you very much, Managing Director and CEO of Fidelity Bank PLC, Mrs. Nekan Yalekbe, for that great start to this event, which is history in the making. She said a few things. She said, global remittances is the new oil, so let's help you mine it. And she also said that after this meeting, we'll have come up with a robust framework to ensure that those ideas here do not waste away because we have amazing Nigerians out there that can always tap into this. Thank you very much for that great start, MD CEO, Fidelity Bank PLC. Now it is time for a message from our special guest of honor, who to be honest needs little or no introduction. His Excellency Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, S-A-N-G-C-O-N, is a Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He's an accomplished scholar, a teacher, a lawyer, administrator, a professor, of law is one of the nation's leading experts on the law of evidence, national and regional corporate commercial laws and public law. He holds a bachelor's degree in law from the University of Lagos and a master's degree in law from the London School of Economics and Political Science. He is a senior advocate of Nigeria. It would also interest you to know that he is no stranger to the banking sector, as he was an independent director of the Citibank Nigeria, as well as an ethics advisor to the board of the Africa Development Bank. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, S-A-N-G-C-O-N, who is ably represented by Ms. Yewande Sadiku, the Executive Secretary and CEO of Nigeria Investment Promotion Council, a woman who interestingly is also no stranger to the banking sector with 23 years banking experience. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Yetunde Sariku.
Well, not to worry, Ms. Yoande Sadiko will be joining us any moment. You understand the vice president and the president took their first COVID jab today. So you understand there might be a lot of activity going on. So while we wait on uh, Ms. Yoande Sadiko, our next guest will interest you. Now, ever since she was given the new role as a chairman and CEO of NIDCOM, 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 well, I go with NIDCOM, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, which was in November 2018, she has consistently been at the forefront of issues relating to the welfare of Nigerians in the diaspora. Well, time and again, she has swung into action to come to the rescue of Nigerians when needed the most. And it's commonplace to see her tagged on Twitter when Nigerians need the government's help. Now, this woman has a president's ear as she is a senior special assistant to the president on foreign affairs and diaspora. But just to be clear, Honorable Abika Dabiri Erewa, do we have you with us this afternoon? Okay, we'll give you a moment just to unmute yourself and turn your video. Oh, is yes, there she? I'm with you. Oh, it's an honor to have you. Let me just end with your bio. Now, she is a former member of the House of Representatives, which is why I introduced her as Honorable Abikadabir Erewa. Now, some of us might remember her uh, when she was in the NCA, gracing our screens as a delectable and professional journalist for 15 years. And just like fine wine, she continues to get better with age. Ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Abikadabir Erewa. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mr. Okikiolu, for that introduction. Um, the Vice President, ably represented by Mrs. Yewandi Sadiku, the Chief Host, the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Gordon Emefia, our sister, the Managing Director of Fidelity Bank. Let me congratulate you as the first female MD of this bank and uh, one of the highest in the corporate world, congratulations. And I know that you will excel, not just as a woman because of the qualities you're bringing into uh, the banking industry. So I also pay my respect and compliments to all speakers on this forum. And uh, thank you Fidelity Bank for putting this together. And thank you CBN Governor for being the chief host for this very important webinar. Now, um, when the MD was speaking, you talked about, you know, Nigerians being everywhere in the world. Absolutely, you're very correct. And where there are no Nigerians, something must not be happening there. That is very true. And because of the enormous, enormous potentials that we have as Nigerians in the diaspora, that is why this administration set up the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. Now, the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission is a one-stop agency for the diaspora. And um, we started work in July last year. So we're about a month and a few months in office, but I'm so impressed with the enthusiasm, with the support, with the passion Nigerians in diaspora have for their country. And they are glad that there's an agency specifically for the diaspora. Now, moving to the topic today on the issue of what, the very important policy that the CBN has come up with, and we're talking about the issue of diaspora remittances. Number one is we all know that CBN came up with a policy in 2020 um, up via a series of circulars. And on January 22nd, CBN issued another circular setting out the modalities for the payment of diaspora remittances. Now, the key thing is this, that as a Nigerian in the diaspora, you send in your money, you get it in the currency that you sent in. So you send in dollars, you get in dollars, you send in pounds, you get in pounds. I love to say that this is the policy that will positively impact diaspora remittances into Nigeria. There are still some teething issues which we continue to discuss with the CBN, but this is a policy that will positively change a lot of things as regards diaspora remittances. Now, when we talk about remittances, we know that, yes, we've sent in, and in terms of data, we're looking at between 12 to 17 million Nigerians in the diaspora. We have to, when we talked about the numerous ones in Africa, in Sudan alone, 
I, I believe that the way things are going, half of the population may just be Nigerians. The same thing with Cameroon and several countries in Africa, which we will be working on serious data on. So the data we have that Madame uh, alluded to is just uh, not particularly accurate statistics. So one of the things Bitcoin will be doing is working on accurate data of Nigerians in the diaspora. And I know that we just may be having more than the millions we're talking about. Then I'll define who a diaspora is because we come up with a lot of, a diaspora is someone who is living legally in another country for at least one year. And a diaspora living in that country must be paying tax in that country, must have an address and must be legitimate. So we also have many cases of illegal migrants all over the world that are Nigerians. And when we get when they have issues, we intervene. But that is the official definition of who a diaspora is. So moving on now, particularly as it, as it, as it relates to remittances, we also know that these remittances are basically for personal upkeep, but they have a lot of impact on our country. If you're talking about $25 billion remitted by Nigerians in the diaspora, that is quite a huge chunk of our annual budget. But here is the thing. We're not even talk about, talking about the unofficial remittances, the $500, $1,000 that does not go through the system. And that is why a policy like the CBN has come up with will change a whole lot of things. Also, one of the things we appeal to the CBN to do is to reduce the cost of these remittances. Nigerians, Nigeria charges the, the highest in the world, almost about 9%. Other countries charge much less. So one of the things we need to look at is to reduce the cost of remittances. And I'm sure more Nigerians will even send their money through the formal means of remittances than the informal ones. So think all this that needs to be put in place for that. And also encourage it. And you know, um, Fidelity doing this, we have not even tapped into even 25% of Nigerians in the diaspora. So this $25 billion is coming from like I said, less than half of the population in the diaspora. So making structured engagements, which NITCOM is doing, working with relevant agencies, structured engagements, reaching out to the diaspora, will do a lot more. Now, beyond remittances, it's okay to send money in beyond remittances. We also believe that there should be a structure for Nigerians in the diaspora to invest in Nigeria. Particularly, we've set up the Nigeria Diaspora Investment Trust Fund. We've set up a team to look into the modalities for this. They've submitted the report to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. I believe that when this comes on stream, Fidelity and other banks and every other person, CBN, will show an interest in this so that Nigerians in the diaspora can specifically invest in whatever aspect of the economy they want to invest in. They ask us all the time, we want to do something back home. This will be a platform that will be for Nigerians in the diaspora to invest specifically in their country. Of course, there are other areas um, you can invest in green bonds, you can invest in, for instance, the government has just set up the infrastructure company of Nigeria by Mr. President. And I believe that this will have interest in a lot of Nigerians in the diaspora who will want to take opportunity of the CBN um, policy through the new Forex policy to invest in their country. We also have the Nigeria Diaspora Investment Summit, and we've had the third one so far. And again, it's very impressive how Nigerians abroad are very much interested in doing things in their country. And so far, Nigerians abroad have been able to invest, shown interest in the healthcare sector. And, I'm, and I think Dr. Suleiman is there. Dr. Suleiman is not actually in America. He's one of those who have returned home and doing great things in the medical field in Nigeria. So we have them invested in the health sector, agric sector, real estate sector, education, and ICT business. From the statistics we have, that is the area of opportunities that Nigerians in the diaspora have shown a lot of interest in. And when we talk about Nigerians in the diaspora, I tell you, it, it, you're were inducted into the MBA in one day alone. We have Professor Koji, who was recently inducted into the NASA Hall of Fame. He will be the second Nigerian. We also had Dr. Sumbu in that regard. We have um, uh, Dr. Bagu, who is one of those who developed the COVID vaccine. I can go on and on. In the world of technology, medicine, science, everywhere Nigerians are excelling. Now, how do we as a country take advantage of these Nigerians that are excelling? 
I think that is part of the reason why we're here. And that is part of the reason why we have NITCOM. And that is part of why we must continue to engage with Nigerians in the diaspora. Now, beyond remittances, investment, Nigerians have got showing a lot of interest in skills, knowledge, and transfer. For instance, um, we have some Nigerians who will be coming up this year to, to specifically train Nigerians in the world of tech and ICT. We have a Nigerian who is now heading Universal Studios in America. Imagine partnering with her for skills transfer, knowledge in the entertainment industry is going to go a long way. So beyond even the money they send, the skills transfer, knowledge acquisition is one of the areas we're focusing in for with Nigerians in the diaspora. And also the younger generation of Nigerians in the diaspora. It's amazing what they are doing. And it's amazing the kind of passion they're also showing. And you know what? We're beginning to engage them. And we believe that the results will continue to be positive for this country, Nigeria. Now, when some ask us, why do you keep celebrating Nigerians in the diaspora? Number one, that is my job schedule because I'm in charge of the diaspora. But secondly, is that they are Nigerians and they are excelling. So who was doing it before? Who was celebrating us before? Nobody. And nobody will celebrate us but ourselves. When Donald Trump put us on some list, we didn't even have to say anything. Americans themselves came out and said, Nigerians are the best in the world, wherever you find them. But again, the challenge is this. Let's work together to build our own country. And as I keep telling them, we are one community, whether you're Nigerian at home or Nigerian in the diaspora. There's an elderly Nigerian doctor in Canada he even got a community named after him in Canada because of his medical services to that community. Now he's come back home and retired home and he's beginning to give back to the community. And he said, you know what? I wish we had a need come and I wish we had done this many, many years ago. So we are coming up with projects and programs that will encourage Nigerians in the diaspora to invest in their home country. So Fidelity Bank, again, I want to thank you for the support you've given to the diaspora, to need come for our programs, to diaspora organizations. And there'll be a lot more that I believe will be working. Um, sorry, we'll be working in partnership um, with you. So even the agricultural system, I believe that there's a lot we can do in that regard, working with the CBN, with banks and all that. And like I said, we have not even tapped into how the opportunities, have the talents, have the um, support we can get from Nigerians in the diaspora. But the good news is we're beginning to do that. And the good news is that they are passionate about their country. They are working very hard to ensure that they are part of the programs and policies of the country. Are there challenges? Oh, absolutely, a whole lot of challenges. For instance, they will talk about security. Security challenges is facing all of us there in the face. And the president is doing everything to, to resolve those issues. And also, when the president travels abroad, he always engages Nigerians abroad. And he tell, just tells them three things. Don't forget home. We will tackle corruption. We'll make ease of doing business better. And we want to welcome you back home to partner with the Nigerian government. We're not saying pack your bags and come home. But wherever you are, Nigerians in the diaspora can be part of the policies and programs of their country. Now, working with the CBN and also the um, financial industry to facilitate more investment portfolios that Nigerians in the diaspora can tap into. And you have NITCOM to be there as the bridge. And then again, we have a lot of diaspora deaths. We have an EFCC. So for a Nigerian in the diaspora, if you're afraid, don't be afraid. We have an a desk at the EFCC for you. We have in the Ministry of Health, Women Affairs, dealing directly with the diaspora. And when the diaspora policy comes on stream, virtually every ministry, department, and agency will have a diaspora desk. So that, and then we also have virtually in every state, a state diaspora focal officer. And what that means is that if you want to invest in Nigeria, you're not coming to Abuja. You're not going to the CBN government, you're going to a state. So every state now has a diaspora focal person so that we move diaspora to the sub-national level. That is the importance we attach to the diaspora. And to round up, we're talking about human capital development. We're talking about our greatest asset, which the MD alluded to. It's not about oil now, it's about our people. It's about what we can do with ourselves. And the diaspora cannot be ignored. And they are not being ignored. In fact, no excuses anymore because now you have a Nigerians in diaspora commission. So we just need to work together. Nigerians at home and Nigerians in the diaspora. Some tell me, are you saying Nigerians abroad are better than us? And I say, no, absolutely not. What we are saying is that 
We are one community. Whether you are here or there, let's work together. If you have Nigerians excelling everywhere in the world, whether it's entertainment, whether it's art, why can't we partner with them to do better things in our country? That is why NITCOM is there. That is why we will continue to work with our brothers and sisters abroad. Alista Soyode, for instance, has been able to connect us with the whole world. More Nigerians abroad can do that. You can have more Nigerians even come home and set up you know, various things that can make this country a better place for every one of us. So once more, thank you Fidelity Bank for putting this together. And I know that when we continue these engagements, we'll not be talking about 25 billion dollars. We'll, we can double that amount. And not just remittances, direct investment. There are some team in America, the Nigerian American Business Council, that wants to bring a $3 billion to Nigeria. COVID has affected them and some other technical issues, but they will do it. Professor Suleiman, is working with some other groups to develop the healthcare sector in Nigeria. We also have a young Nigerian who just started by exporting cocoa from Ibadan. Now he's one of the biggest suppliers of coffee in Rwanda. And they're even talking about our exporting our food, which we're working with NEPC. So there's a whole lot we can do. Fidelity Bank, we look forward to working more with you. CBN Governor, we look forward to more policies and also working with the new policies that we have that will encourage and galvanize more Nigerians in the diaspora. So at the end of it all, the power of the diaspora needs to be tapped into. And the power of the diaspora can even have a positive effect on even the foreign exchange, um, uh, the, the amount we pay for the dollars and all that. And I also believe that the Bureau de Change that has a strong association should also be actively involved and we work with them. So thank you very much Fidelity Bank for putting this together. We look forward to more engagements, more, um, conversations and engagements with our wonderful brothers and sisters in the diaspora. And finally, I'll say that wherever we are as Nigerians, we are simply the best. All we need to do is change our mindset and ensure that we do everything possible to invest in our human, in, 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 our, in Nigerians as a people, build infrastructure, build people by investing in them and also building institutions, which this administration is absolutely working on. Thank you very much and God bless you all for listening. Thank you. Oh goodness, you can almost you can almost touch her passion for Nigerians in the diaspora. She says Nigerians are the best, they are strong. And she says the opportunities are endless. So we're moving from diaspora remittances to direct investments in Nigeria. And just when you think about uh, that, we've not even tapped into 25% of Nigerians in diaspora. You imagine there's 75% still out there waiting to be tapped into. So if you're one of them, this is where you need to be right now. And we have the products, the portfolio to help you actualize those dreams and tap into the great investments in Nigeria. Once again, Honorable Labike Dabiri Erewa, thank you so much for those insightful thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, let's move on on the program right now. And we'll, we'll be joined by our very special guest of honor. In fact, she's here right now. Miss Yewande Sadiku represents the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo. She is the Executive Secretary and the Chief Executive Officer of Nigeria Investment Promotion Council, NIPC. Like I said earlier, she is not a stranger to the banking industry. She has the understanding, the expertise with 23 years banking experience. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with me, Miss Yewande Sadiku. If you could just uh, put on your video, Miss Sadiku, so we can see you. We'd love to hear you, but we'd even love to see you the more so we can have a robust conversation. Thank you very much. to be having some difficulty with the connection. But Ms. Sadiku, if you're here, could you signify just a moment, just to be sure that you can hear us? Okay, we'll get that sorted for you 
Oh, there she is. Uh, Ms. Sadiku, you're welcome once again. It's great to finally have you with us. Please go ahead. Well, I, I don't know about you. As a business person, I'm already thinking about business ideas, ways to invest with that connection. I mean, the data and internet areas are places you can also invest into so we can have better connection, right? Well, we're moving on now. We'll get that sorted, so not to worry. We'll get to hear from, from the vice president in a moment. But we have a lineup of amazing speakers for you this afternoon. And guess what? We're moving on to our chief hosts on this inaugural webinar for Nigerians in diaspora. Now, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, CON, is the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Now, prior to his joining the CBN, he spent over 26 years, that's right, 26 years in commercial banking, culminating in his tenure as the group managing director and the CEO of one of Nigeria's largest banks. Now, before his banking career, he would interest you to know that he was a lecturer in finance and insurance in two Nigerian universities. Mr. Emifiele CON holds degrees in banking and finance from the University of Nigeria in Suka, and is also an alumnus of Stanford University, Harvard and Wharton Graduate Schools of Business. Now, as governor of Nigeria's Apex Bank, Mr. Emifiele has been vital to the nation's recovery from dire economic realities. And that's even when other countries are still grappling and struggling as we speak. Now, under his leadership, the central bank has been at the forefront of injecting more confidence in the nation's economy with a key emphasis on supporting improved GDP growth and of course, greater private sector investment. Now, as a proof of his brilliance, he is the first to serve two consecutive terms as a governor of the CBN since 1999. It is my pleasure and honor to welcome today the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emefiele, CON. Good afternoon, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much, Mr. Okikiolu, for that um, uh, introduction. Your Excellency, the Vice President, represented by uh, the Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Investment Promotion Council. And uh, please let me stand on already established protocol so I can go straight to the issues for the day. Um, I am delighted to, to be attending this forum this today to discuss broad issues bordering on the uh, new FX policy and how it impacts diaspora investments in Nigeria. I'd also like to seize this opportunity to thank the organizers of this event, uh, Fidelity Bank PLC, and particularly um, its managing director, Mrs. Nneka Onye Likwe, um, for uh, organizing this, this very, very important event. As um, let me say that I feel so honored to be here this afternoon because looking at the number of participants at this event, I see already over 3,600 participants here. And I must say that this is the beauty of um, the Zoom. Um, I wonder the kind of space that um, Fidelity Bank would have hired and the whole of the logistics that the bank would have put in place uh, to put about 3,600 people in a hall to receive um, speeches on diaspora investments and the new FX policies uh, in Nigeria. That would have cost the bank a lot of money. That would have cost the bank a lot in logistics, hotel accommodation. Perhaps those who are in tourism industry will be regretting why this is happening 
now because they, they could imagine how much they have lost um, as a result of a Zoom event, a webinar of this nature, when perhaps we should be uh, holding fiscal meetings so we can exchange banters and be able to see each other face to face. However, but I must say that Fidelity Bank has done a great job. Over 3,600 people on, as participants at this forum. I have seen over 25 questions. I have seen charts of almost about 100 people. So I feel so gratified to be here, to be addressing this very wide audience this afternoon. As we are all aware, remittances from Nigerians living abroad known as diasporans, has had significant benefits on domestic income, social welfare, and economic growth in our country. Given the depth of skills that Nigerians in the diaspora possess, an effective engagement with them in vital, in vital, is vital towards maximizing the gains that they could make in supporting further investments and growth in our country. Let me underscore the fact that this is second um, um, engagement I'll be having with our brethren in diaspora. The first being immediately we introduced um, the uh, FX policy on diaspora remittances um, in Nigeria. And that event was very fruitful. We had very, very important and prominent Nigerians in diaspora in attendance at that, that seminar. And I also want to thank uh, Mrs. Um, uh, Erewa for organizing that event. And I must say that after that event, I was looking forward to another opportunity to hold um, engagement with our brethren in Bob diaspora to discuss uh, this issue. So I must say that this is a very good one. And uh, after this, I look forward to more and more of this because it affords us opportunity to, um, to clear the air on some areas that require um, um, further explanation. And indeed, as we proceed in these discussions this afternoon, you will see that even as, at, as we speak right now, there has been a further um, a secular release to encourage diaspora, our diaspora brethren uh, to really look back at home to see what can be done. Um, our diaspora community, given their ties to Nigeria, have a vital interest in supporting improved welfare of Nigerians at home. In addition, remittances are less volatile when compared to other forms of foreign investment, such as foreign portfolio investment, which could be prone to sudden reversals and are influenced by external factors, such as changes in monetary policy by advanced economies. Following the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, emerging market countries witnessed significant reversal of over $100 billion worth of financial flows as investors retreated to safe, safer heavens, assets such as US Treasury bills. Some analysts had expected a significant dip in remittances to emerging and frontier markets as a result of the slowdown in global growth during the first half of the year. This was not the case in countries such as Pakistan, Bangladesh, Mexico, and India, where we saw a significant boost in diaspora remittances. The increased flow of remittances helped in mitigating the negative effects of the pandemic and the outflow of portfolio funds on their respective economies. At the Central Bank of Nigeria, we understand its ramifications for foreign, ex foreign exchange rate stability, reserve aid creation, job creation, poverty reduction, and economic growth. As a result, our policy aim is to broaden the scope and scale of diaspora influence, which ensure, while ensuring that those in diaspora leverage former channels in remitting funds rather than informal channels that are more prone to fraud in addition to poor safeguards for consumers that utilize these services. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the key elements of the sustainable development goals is to increase the volume of global remittances as a percentage of gross domestic product 
while reducing the cost of remittances. So, and, and I note what uh, Mrs. Erewa talked about remittances and we'll also be engaging on that. This aligns perfectly with the objective of the CBN and the Nigerian government. Following the recent outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, global remittance flows to developing countries is estimated to fall by 7.2% to $508 billion in 2020, and a further 7.5% to $470 billion in 2021. Regardless of the global fall in remittance flows in 2020, they remain a major source of stable external financing for developing countries. According to the World Bank, flows to low and middle income countries reached a record high of $548 billion in 2019. These surpassed foreign direct investment flows of $537 billion and overseas development assistance of about $166 billion. Consistent with the global trend, Nigeria aspires to ensure that remittance flows and diaspora investment become a significant source of external financing. Over the years, foreign direct investments and more noticeably for portfolio flows to Nigeria have exhibited volatilities, the reversals of which exert enormous pressure on domestic market conditions. Hence, the need to boost remittance flows. Today, the World Bank data shows that Nigeria with a total flow of $21 billion was the seventh largest recipient of remittances in 2019. This is behind India, China, and even Egypt. Though official remittance flows declined in 2020 due largely to the undermining impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, it maintained its dominance over FDI flows. Accordingly, the CBN strives to constantly improve our remittance infrastructure, ease the process of international money transfer, and simply and simplify the experience for senders and recipients. In this regard, we note that the efficiency of remittance services, especially as provided by the international money transfer organizations, are critical to our aim of boosting inflows. We will constantly seek to fine tune our policies to mitigate factors that affect the quality of service, cost service to customer face-to-face -face when using IMTUs and new FX policies. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, many analysts are of the view that remittance flows to Nigeria may be largely underestimated given the unofficial transfer routes and incomplete reportage by remittance service providers. Price House Coopers forecasts suggest that Nigeria's remittance flow could reach $34.89 billion by 2023. But this can only be accomplished if remittance infrastructure improves and if the right policies are put in place. Report of remittance inflows are grossly characterized and marred by irregularities as some money transfer operators unlawfully choose to underreport the inflows. Their mode of operation is to report less amount than what they receive and thereafter pursue arbitrage premium by selling the unreported excess in other markets at different rates. This is our definition of round tripping, which is wholly illegal in Nigeria. Accordingly, and in view of the need to correct the observed irregularities, the CBN took decisive policy actions. These policies amended the procedures for receipt of diaspora remittances with the overall aim of improving the administration of remittance flows into Nigeria. The key highlights of the new policies are, one, beneficiaries of remittance flows through an international money transfer organization, IMTU, shall only receive such inflows in foreign currency through any bank of their choice. Two, recipients have the sole decision to receive the foreign currency, US dollar, 
either in physical cash or instruct the bank to credit the fund to an ordinary domiciliary account, depending on their preference. Three, IMTOs are mandated to unambiguously disclose to remittance beneficiaries that such recipients have exclusive discretion to decide the mode of payment. Four, IMTOs must ensure that all funds received in favor of beneficiaries in Nigeria are promptly deposited into the agent bank's correspondent bank. Furthermore, in an effort to reduce the cost burden of remitting funds to Nigeria by working Nigerians in diaspora, the Central Bank of Nigeria only yesterday introduced a rebate of five naira for every dollar of fund remitted to Nigeria through IMTUs licensed by the Central Bank of Nigeria. This rebate will be provided to the bank accounts of beneficiaries following receipt of remittance inflows by the recipients in Nigeria. And I repeat, if you remit, for instance, $1,000 and the recipient receives $1,000 cash or the money is transferred to the domiciliary account, the recipient has a choice to collect 5,000 Naira as cash right at the counter or 5,000 Naira get credited to his Naira account just as a correspondent to the domiciliary account transfer that, um, that you have conducted. We believe this new measure will help to make the process of sending remittance through former bank channels cheaper and more convenient for Nigerians in the diaspora. The new policy is expected to take effect on Monday, the 8th of March, 2021. And, we, and from the circular release, it's going to be there for just 60 days. At the first instance, we see how this works. And from there, we will proceed. And let me say that Nigeria is not the first country where this has been introduced. And uh, some of you who may have heard me in the past know that I had said that on a monthly basis, Pakistan actually receives $2 billion in remittance. That's why remittance is monthly. They've introduced such type of incentives to encourage their diaspora and brethren to uh, inflow money home. The same thing in Bangladesh and a few other clients. What do we hope to achieve? Ladies and gentlemen, a policy on administration of remittance flows is aimed at increasing the transparency of remittance inflows, reducing rent-seeking activities, and providing Nigerians in the diaspora with cheaper and more convenient ways of sending remittances to Nigeria. In addition, we believe that this new policy measure will encourage banks and financial institutions to develop products and investment vehicles geared towards attracting investments from Nigerians in the diaspora. We have no doubt that these changes can help to finance a future stream of investment opportunities for Nigerians living abroad. Yet, the introduction of the new policy presented new challenges as operators and remittance service providers were initially unable to integrate with their agent banks. The CBN continues to work assiduously to resolve the few intermittent interface challenges that are remaining. We are brokering meetings on a weekly basis between the IMTOs and the banks in order to ensure that we have a smooth transition and a diaspora community have a more efficient way to remit funds back to Nigeria. In general, this new policy is expected to enlarge the scope and scale of foreign exchange inflows into our country with a view to stabilizing the exchange rate and supporting accretion to external reserves. More importantly, it will provide an opportunity for Nigerians living abroad to make investments in their home country. I give you an example. There are a couple of our brethren in diaspora, doctors, pharmacists, accountants, lawyers who have tried in the past to even own homes. They live in comfortable homes abroad. And the dream of an opportunity, particularly at the time they conceive retiring and returning back home, that they should be able to live comfortably 
in some of the high brand locations that we have in Nigeria, whether it's Lagos, whether it's Abuja, it's Kano, it's Kaduna, or it's Port Harcourt or Enugu. But what has happened in the past is that when they make attempts to remit those funds home, they get ripped either by fraudsters or by some of their brothers and sisters who have various other challenges and so may not be able to use the funds remitted for the purpose for which they were meant. What are we saying? With the opportunities that, afford, that is afforded by banks like Fidelity, and I've had several engagements with the Nigerian banks, that they could look at the possibility of, of, of maybe acquiring on, the behalf, on behalf of our brethren in diaspora, large expanse of land, whether in Lagos, Lake area, or Ikui, or you want it in Abuja, some of the Hybra area, Maitama, and all the rest of them, or Port Harcourt in Inugu and different areas. They should be able to acquire land, and we will work with them, talk, speaking with the governors of those states, to acquire land in very prime areas where those land, parcels of land can be partitioned and our brethren in diaspora can own land. The banks will on their, on their own, on their, on their part, um, um, invest. And Central Bank is also willing to support the banks in providing uh, funding, seed funding for this uh, for the building of these homes. Once this is done by the by way of acquisition and building, our brethren in Damo diaspora should have an opportunity to say maybe make some initial deposit of their of their dollars, and of course have an arrangement where just like you have your credits in, in abroad, it should be possible for you to on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis, remit funds from 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 United States or from from wherever Pakistan, India. Uh, US, London, everywhere, remit money home um, to support the building of your house. Or even after you have acquired it, you furnish it, you want to furnish it, you can do online furnishing and make payments. And this is the kind of things we're thinking about for our brethren in diaspora. So that at least, first of all, like people talk about in economics, what are the basic necessities of life? Food, clothing, shelter. At least you can feed yourself. When you retire home, you need a shelter over your head. Right? Then after that, you can begin to think about whether you want to invest in, or in other parts of the country. I've had discussions with a few, and I, what I plead with them, I say, listen, guys, don't ask me for contract. I, I don't have contracts. But if you need some kind of banking support, which we can put together with the banks, we'll be ready to work with you. You want to do agriculture, you want to do any form, or you want to do any type of investment. As long as the banks have, you have a good credit with our Nigerian banks, it should be possible to put this together for you. You are an association of Nigerian doctors, an association of Nigerian pharmacists, lawyers, accountants, you people are well read. And it should be possible to put bankable facilities in place for you so as to secure your retirement. So that by the time you are leaving, um, uh, you, are, you want to begin to shuttle between US and Nigeria or between London and Nigeria and all that, because just like um, Abike said, we don't want you to leave the United States. You probably have the, the United States citizenship. Don't drop it. Nigeria allows dual citizenship. But also think about home, because whether you like it or not, at some point, you would love to be home. When you are retiring, you remember that you, need, you have a couple of friends or brethren that you grew up with, and you want to be able to stay in the village, in your garden, and or somewhere in Lagos, in Lekki, with your friends, and drink palm wine and enjoy yourselves. Those are the kind of things we wish for you. And would love to see this come, come to pass in our lives. I want to thank you all, but let me say that in closing, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to emphasize that we recognize the significant role of Nigeria's diaspora community plays in supporting growth and development in Nigeria. It is in this regard, and with a view to taking advantage of the huge opportunities from the diaspora community, that the CBN redefined its strategy through the recent FX policies. We are convinced that the new FX policy, by creating an easier, more flexible, and more transparent system of remittance administration, will greatly enhance the benefits of diaspora remittance, the remittances in supporting investments and growth in our Nigerian economy. I thank you for your attention. Good afternoon once again. 
Let me say that I'll be leaving uh, because I, I, I had hoped that in one hour this would end because I have another three o'clock meeting, but I'll be here for a few more minutes, but just in case you find that my video is turned off, you know I would have left for my other meetings. Thank you very much, Mr. Okikiolu. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much, sir. Well, once again, thank you very much, Mr. Godwin Demefiele, CON, the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. It's, it's not every day you get to see the Governor of the CBN talk heart to heart. It's really rare, and it just shows how important this policy is and i mean he broke it down very easy practical examples and i'm glad he said that they're ready to engage I mean, don't ask for contracts he says ask for support for your business once again thank you so much uh, governor of the central bank of nigeria mr Godwin mefiere for sharing those thoughts with us just for emphasis it says the policy will take off on monday march the 8th for 60 days at the first instant. And the aim is to ensure convenience, accessibility, and basically make life easier for you, the Nigerian in the diaspora. Just quickly, we have over 3,600 people joining us on Zoom, but guess what? We have so much more because we are live on Arise TV, We're also live on YouTube. So we have hundreds of thousands of Nigerians both here and outside the country joining us for this one of its kind inaugural diaspora meeting. Once again, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you for joining us this afternoon. But as you know, I'm not alone this afternoon. We have so much more for you. So let me invite my co-host, Rotus Odiri, just to give us a sneak peek of what we have in store for you. Hi, Rotus. Hey, Coyote, great to be here. Uh, shout out to Fidelity Bank for bringing us all for this inaugural uh, Diaspora webinar series. A lot to come, incredible stuff, historic. With that the breaking news there from uh, the central bank uh, governor, Godwin Ofele, with that uh, Naira for dollar incentive to bring more uh, remittances into the country. Historic stuff uh, well, brought to you by Fidelity Bank. But we've got a panel, uh, all-star panel. Uh, of course, uh, Professor Undubisi Ekekwe is going to be joining us. He's also a guest speaker as well. He's going to be on our panel. He is, of course, the chairman of uh, Fast Micro Group. Uh, we've also got uh, Professor Wale Suleiman, an accomplished neurosurgeon. He, of course, is also the chairman, RNZ Global Limited. He's into healthcare. He is going to be joining us on our uh, panel. And also, we also we have uh, Alistair Shoyode. He is, of course, of course well, the founder of Bright Entertainment Network, Ben TV. He is going to be joining us as well. So there's a Q&A, so drop your questions in. I've seen a lot of questions already in the Q&A box at the bottom there. Uh, we will ask them a lot of questions. We'll have a running dialogue. It promises to be a lot of fun, Coyote. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, this meeting is perfect, isn't it, Rotus? It the is. policy kicks off 8th of March, and we're sharing some of the products and plans that Fidelity Bank has for you to make it easier, really. Uh, for you to invest, do business, remit in Nigeria. Easy peasy. Like you said, there's, there's been a lot of questions, Rotus, and it will be quite interesting to hear the answers to those questions. Indeed. I guess you're pumped, right? I'm very pumped, very pumped. Okay, right now we have some product videos for you. I mean, we've packaged some amazing products just for you, as well as some testimonials. So please stay with us. You are watching the Diaspora webinar series brought to you by Fidelity Bank. Still to come, our guest speakers, Professor O.K. Orama, Chairman of Frexen Bank, Professor Undabisi Okekwe, the Chairman, First Micro Group, and an interactive panel discussion with Mr. Alistair Shoyede, Professor Olawale Sulaiman, and Professor Undabisi Okekwe. Stay tuned. My name is uh, Julius Padua, and I am an obstetrician gynecologist in the state of uh, California uh, in Los Angeles County. 
I uh, belong to the Association of Nigerian Physicians in the Americas. Uh, we all got in introduced uh, to Fidelity Bank at one of our national conventions. The experience with the bank has been a very pleasant one. Uh, the bank officials have gone out of their way to make our financial transactions very, very easy and successful. Uh, Hello everyone, here is a very happy Fidelity Banker. My name is Mrs. Francisca Aire Oahimere and I'm a resident of United States of America. I'm a nurse by profession. I'm also an instructor by profession. I'm a nursing instructor. I'm a very happy Fidelity Banker because Fidelity has uh, come to help us achieve investors in Nigeria. I have an idea that Fidelity uh, customers in 2011. That was when we opened the account. And it has been a very, very rewarding, interesting, uh, wonderful, pitch free experience. Now, I agree, nothing is perfect, nothing is 100%. But Fidelity has uh, they've met our expectation above and beyond. When we started, I started trying them little by little by sending little money. And as soon as we send it, I write a letter and send it to my personal banker. Everything is, I go to sleep. And the online banking is awesome. At the beginning, it was a little rough, but they fixed it. They fixed it, I'm telling you. And it's been an awesome experience. They fixed it. You log in once now, as soon as you log in, that's it. I've introduced so many of my friends and relatives to Fidelity. That's how much I appreciate their services. Even when I go home to Nigeria, they even come to my house. If I'm unable to go to the bank, they send somebody to meet me at home to ensure my dream comes to pass. I, they send somebody to my home. I mean, I, I can't say it all. My experience with fidelity is, 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 um, is beyond expectation, beyond my what we ever imagined that the bank in Nigeria would be. Therefore, I say thank you, Fidelity. Thank you, my personal banker, MEC. You've done so well. Thank you. You have a lifetime customer. Keep it up. Thank you. My name is uh, Julius Padua, and I am an obstetrician gynecologist in the state of uh, California uh, in Los Angeles County. I uh, belong to the Association of Nigerian Physicians in the Americas. Uh, we all got in introduced uh, to Fidelity Bank at one of our national conventions. The experience with the bank has been a very pleasant one. Uh, the bank officials have gone out of their way to make our financial transactions very, very easy and successful. Uh, just about everybody that I know of uh, that is banking with uh, Fidelity has the same very pleasant experience. Uh, the bank officials that we interact with go out of their way to make sure that our financial transactions go uh, on very smoothly. <clears throat> in 2009, as president of the Nigerian Physician Association in the Americas, I opened up a, uh, an account uh, for the association. Uh, and the association still has the account till tomorrow. And it has been a very pleasant experience with the bank. 
Uh, many of our members have bought real estate uh, through the Fidelity Bank uh, that offer the real estate loans. I uh, wish to uh, recognize some members of the uh, bank of officials uh, that have made our transactions to be very, very pleasing. I wish to say thank you to them and to many of their colleagues that have really helped us. And I want to thank everybody for listening. Thank you very much. Real customers, real reviews, and you can hear their testimonies. And that's what you get from a bank that keeps its word. Well, right now, we will get to hear from our special guest of honor. That's right, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshimbaje, who is ably represented by the Executive Secretary and the CEO of Nigeria Investment Promotion Council. Like I said, I've said time and again, she's someone who's not a stranger to the banking industry. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Yewande Sadiku. Good afternoon all, and my apologies for the challenges that I've had with technology today. I'm actually connecting with my laptop, which I don't normally use for these engagements, but it, it appears a problem with my, um, with my desktop requires a bit more work. Um, many thanks to Fidelity Bank, the hosts of today's event for organizing this event. I've been asked to represent His Excellency, the Vice President, and make a few comments. I know he was given five minutes to speak, and as he's a stickler for time himself, I will stick to um, the time that he was given for the message that I have to give. Nigerians in diaspora represent an indomitable force. They're flag bearers of Nigeria's image. Nigeria's entrepreneurial energy, Nigeria's irrepressible spirit, Nigeria's incredible can-do attitude. In business and in politics, in education and in sports, in entertainment and in science, in medicine and in arts, Nigerians have demonstrated across the world what Nigerians re represent in Nigeria. We realize the role of the diaspora and the potential that they represent. Um, the MD mentioned when she spoke that Nigerians in diaspora represent Nigeria's oil. Um, Nigeria's new oil, Nigeria's old oil, they represent the value that Nigeria translates to the world. And in many ways, they show the world what we're capable of. The human, the capital, and the material resources that Nigerians in diaspora represent is what informed government's um, interest in ensuring that the potential of this particular group is tapped, which is why the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission Establishment Act was signed into law in 2017. And a, you, know, you heard her speak, the passion with which she speaks about Nigerians in diaspora, the passion that she commits to this task, to any task. We've seen with Honorable Abike Dabiri Erewa, um, and she translates, she's a living proof of what is possible with Nigerians. Now for many years, the remittances from Nigerians in diaspora for several years, you know, exceeded Nigeria's oil revenues, translated sometimes as high as 6% of GDP. We were interested in understanding exactly how to translate this potential to investment. So we actually, the Office of the Vice President, working with a couple of stakeholders in government, including NIPC, worked on a study in 2017 to help us better understand the potential of the Nigerian um, diaspora investment group. And we found that many Nigerians, particularly first generation male, um, have a keen interest in investing in their country and are interested in particular, many investors do portfolio investments. They're interest, they are interested in venturing beyond the Lagos investment um, area and further afield in Nigeria. They indicated we found that 70% actually of the diaspora inflows that come into Nigeria 
go towards family support. Only 30% of the inflows go towards investments. And I heard the comment said earlier about real estate. I believe the central bank governor referred to Nigerians coming home to build their own homes. Of the 30% that is invested, we found the bulk of it actually goes into real estate. But what Nigerians in diaspora indicated would be useful for them to undertake more investment in Nigeria is specific engagements that promote investment opportunities led by the private sector. From government, what they asked for was improvements in the enabling business environment. The efforts of government in recent years have been focused on improving the business environment and initiatives such as this, driven by the private sector to attract um, investment from the diaspora is one of the key things they asked for. They asked for government policies that make it easier for them to invest. So we're delighted with the new CBN policy that makes it easier for diaspora Nigerians, not just to transfer funds to Nigeria, but to have greater control over the funds that they transfer to Nigeria. And I know that when the statistics are released, we'll see the material impact that it has had on Nigerians' investments, um, on the diaspora remittances from Nigerians to Nigeria. So my message was very short to express His Excellency's delight at Fidelity Bank undertaking this. This is the inaugural, this is the maiden, this is the first of many to come. But what you're doing is exactly what Nigerians in diaspora asked for, what they indicated that they needed to increase their investment inflows in Nigeria. That's the promotion of specific opportunities led by the private sector. And um, having a bank help make that connection between their investment interest and the opportunities in Nigeria is very welcome by government. I was given five minutes to speak. I believe I have spoken for five minutes. I apologize for the inverted background, but I thank you for the opportunity to speak and wish you the best with the rest of the program. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, once again, thank you so much, Ms. Yohande Sadiko. We finally got to hear from you and, oh dear, we needed that. And, you know, like she said, this is not something we just woke up and thought to do. This has been carefully planned out. The people are asking for this. And Fidelity Bank is giving Nigerians in diaspora this engagement to open your eyes, to open the vista to investment opportunities in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, we have so much in store for you. And at this moment, we're moving into, uh, we're switching gears really to something else. So take a listen. Our next very distinguished speaker assumed the position of the president and chairman of the board of directors of the Africa Export Import Bank, that's Africa Bank, in September 2015. He also supervised the research and knowledge management department and assisted the president in overseeing the strategic planning and international cooperation functions. By the way, you should read his book titled Foundations of Structured Trade Finance and the more than 35 articles he has written on a wide range of African economic trade and trade finance issues. He serves as a chairperson of the Africa chapter of the International Factors Group, that's IFG, which is a global trade association and is on the board of the IFG and the editorial boards of trade and forfeiting review and the Journal of African Trade. He wears many caps indeed. He is a member of the consultative board on cocoa economy of the International Cocoa Organization. No doubt one of the Nigerians making the country proud, leading one of the top global commerce and trade institutions. I'm talking about none other than Professor 
Benedict Oke Orama. Uh, thank you very much. His Excellency Professor Yemi Osibanjo, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, represented uh, by our sister Ewande uh, Sediku, the CEO of Nigeria Investment Promotion Commission. Our brother, uh, Dr. Godwin Amefiele, Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, Mrs. Abike Davide Erewa, uh, dear sister and director general of the Nigerian City Diaspora Commission, who also looks after us. Our chief host and my very dear sister, uh, Neka Onyali Ibe, managing director and CEO of Fidelity Bank and the board of directors of Fidelity, Your Excellencies, special guests. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm most honored to have been invited to speak at this very important event. So I listened to um, all the speeches earlier. Uh, there was no doubt in my mind how uh, important this event is being held, has been, is being held by our friends and colleagues in diaspora. The webinar is timely, particularly as the continent begins to pay attention to using African resources, wherever they may be, to promote development on the continent. I commend the board and management of Fidelity Bank for initiating such a forum. It is most certainly a reflection of your deep appreciation of the role that the diaspora can play as the continent transitions into an Africa-led and Africa-focused development trajectory under the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. And as a Nigerian in diaspora, I consider the presence of His Excellency, the Vice President, the Governor Mefiele, Mr. Abike W. Erewa, as a resounding endorsement of the work you are doing today. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a few years ago, work took me to Salvador, the capital of the Brazilian state of Bahia, to welcome guests into the hotel I stayed in, where sculptures of two women clad in Yoruba style, Buba and Rapa. And as I sat for dinner later that night, I was served with large balls of akan, with shrimps delicately embedded. In the distance, the sound of Yoruba talking drums drifted through the evening breeze. For a moment, I wondered whether I was in a fishing village in Ondo State. For a moment, I felt truly at home, thousands of miles from the shores of Africa. Then the economist in me took over. As I looked around and wondered about the immense wealth the exported Yoruba cultural assets have helped create in Salvador, I marveled at what might happen. Why is Salvador thriving on a platform of Yoruba culture and the fishing village in Ondo State so far behind? Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the transatlantic slave trade, which began in the 15th century, set the stage for the experience I just narrated. Economic imperatives drew, drove the forceful movement of our people to the Americas and elsewhere around the world. At a time when wealth creation was heavily labor intensive, the slave trade transferred tremendous wealth from Africa 
to the Americas and Europe and contributed to pushing Africa down the development ladder. And because Africa is yet to recover from the damages of that trade, the voluntary and involuntary immigration of Africans to many parts of the world continues today. These migrations have helped create an exceptionally large African diaspora in the Americas, Europe, and increasingly Asia. With people of African descent dominating the populations of countries in the Caribbean and elsewhere, it is no wonder that the African Union has now designated diaspora as Africa's sixth sub-region. This designation has now made it possible for the AU to design specific programs to foster integration with Africans in the diaspora. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is generally agreed that the diaspora is a resource and can be a potent force of, for change on the continent. For instance, migrant remittances to Africa was estimated at $84 billion in 2019, almost twice the level of foreign direct investment flows into the continent at the same time. The diaspora are also estimated to have saved about $30 billion during that same period, making them a potential source of long-term capital formation on the continent. And our internal studies at our Flexing Bank estimate that were the African diaspora to be grouped into a country, its GDP would amount to about $550 billion, larger than Africa's largest economy, which is today Nigeria. The educational attainments of Africans in the diaspora, the overall quality of life and per capita income are higher than those of us on the continent, making the diaspora a potentially strong market for African goods worldwide. We must also recognize that intra-regional migration has increased tremendously. Nigerians, for instance, are in large numbers in Southern, Eastern, and even Northern Africa and some parts of West Africa. Many of them are running retail businesses. In the area of the Africa Continental Free Trade Ag Agreement, a supply chain can be built around them, which can support export manufacturing in Nigeria. The same can be said for other countries with similarly large number of their citizens resident in other African countries. So what I'm saying that as we talk about the diaspora in America and Europe, we must also recognize that you have people in the diaspora people who live within Africa, but not in their countries of origin, people like me. The African diaspora also possess tremendous technical skills, know-how, entrepreneurial acumen, and expertise in corporate and political governance that can be harnessed to create and nurture African businesses and development institutions. The experience of, of other countries, including the Philippines, Israel, India, Mexico, and so on, can serve as useful lessons for Africa in devising measures to harness the diaspora strength for Africa's development. I'm pleased that many African countries have begun taking strategic approaches in their engagements with the diaspora. Nigeria today boasts of the largest diaspora community and the single largest recipient of migrant remittances in Africa, sometimes exchanging with Egypt. It also uniquely accounts for a significant collection of highly skilled and educated pool of labor <clears throat> in the diaspora. Many Nigerians in Europe and North America have become prominent inventors, innovating breakthrough technologies that are transforming the health economic and social lives of most people in the West. 
is the Nigerian can innovate life-changing technologies. If Nigeria can produce a pool of world-class nurses, pharmacists, engineers, doctors, and others, why not at home in Nigeria? These talents must be harnessed with a pragmatic national strategy is required. It is for this reason that I consider the establishment of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission as a laudable step, which will help in the mobilization, coordination, and harmonization of diaspora engagement. Also, the national policy on the diaspora can further strengthen the participation of diaspora in socioeconomic activities in Nigeria. We urge the Nigerian and other African governments to continue to create the enabling legal and regulatory environment and provide strong budgetary support to ensure the productive functioning of diaspora engagement. Given the size of the Nigerian diaspora and the potential contributions they can make, why not create a ministry for diaspora relations? India has a ministry for Indians overseas. The same thing also exists in Philippines and elsewhere. It is such a ministry that can help develop and implement an impactful national diaspora strategy and also help to promote advocacy to bring changes in the way engagement with diaspora are made. Today, Nigerians control a large share of the auto parts pharmaceuticals and even building materials business in many Eastern and Southern African countries. Is there a program in place to support those people financially and politically as other well governments provide to their own people in business abroad? Has it occurred to Nigeria that making uh, Nigerian own businesses stronger abroad can boost the Nigerian economy while supporting the host economies also. It can also be useful for, from a geopolitical influence perspective. It was very pleasing to hear the CBN governor make announcements about the reforms that have are taking place with regard <clears throat> to diaspora emittances. These are very, very commendable. There are also a few schemes that we believe can be introduced to mobilize investable funds to complement the funds that are coming in for consumption. I will outline some of those suggestions. We think that Africans or Nigeria also can consider allowing special diaspora foreign currency accounts with higher interest rates than in the US or Europe and with an inbuilt guarantee against potential losses arising from bank failures and country risk. A present bank will be happy to work with the authority to put in place a country risk guarantee that can be retailed to the diaspora depositing money in such foreign currency accounts. We have done something similar in Zimbabwe, which we call the Zimopun facility. Second, designated commercial banks may be encouraged to implement diaspora targeted certificates of deposits that can be liquidated in local currency or foreign currency with built in incentives to encourage liquidation in local currency. The third is properly structured diaspora bonds can be issued with eligible bondholders encouraged to open coupon payment accounts locally in Nigeria to enable them to cover local expenses such as supporting their relatives at home. I say this as a diaspora living abroad. If we have such a diaspora bond and I invest in it, it makes it easier for me to send money to my own relatives rather than sending money every time they need help. A coupon payment account can help me do this. In addition, a payment and regulatory system that can make it easier for the diaspora to remit funds can also be helpful. 
And as I heard the governor talking about some of those engagements uh, that the CBN is having with remittance companies. Technology-driven initiatives, such as crowdfunding platforms can also be promoted and be used to mobilize retail investments for the diaspora, targeted at specific development projects. By creating the requisite environment, the diaspora will become the catalyst, the catalytic force that will break the development barriers and rapidly transform our countries and the continent. At our present bank, we believe in the transformational power of the diaspora. That is why we recently launched a diaspora strategy to realize our vision in this area. And because we have framed our inter-African trip to include Africans in the diaspora, our diaspora strategy is aimed at boosting trade and investment flows between the geographic Africa and Africans in the diaspora. We regard intra-African trade as truly intra-African trade and not intra-Africa trade. A, com a, com a comprehensive study to understand the scope and size of the diaspora market is underway at the bank. Today, you cannot find in one place any study that can tell you the size of the market, where the diaspora lives, what they do, the kind of business, their investment needs, and so on. Platforms to mobilize the enormous savings and migrant remittance to fund African trade investments are also in place. We are also providing a trade information portal that will make it easier for the diaspora to understand the entire African market. We are linking African businesses to their counterparts in the diaspora and running a program that attaches young Africans in the diaspora to our major clients' businesses here on the continent. We are making available trade finance to support two-way trade between Africans here on the continent and those on the diaspora, while helping to expand the demand for African ethnic goods abroad. The Pan-African Payments and Settlement System, which Governing Council is chaired by Governor Mefiele, will start piloting by April and make it easier for the diaspora within Africa to remit funds home and buy goods from their home country instead of elsewhere. In the creative space, the $500 million dedicated facility we launched last year is available to Africans in the diaspora and has started attracting investments into Africa for movie production and re-export to the US. A major project for the transfer of creative skills is ongoing. For instance, Vincent Berry, an eight-time Grammy Award winner, is co-writing music with young Africans under a present bank sponsored program. We offer two internship slots per year to Africans in the diaspora. The objective being to bring them home and make them familiar with the continent. We target not only the, uh, the um, new generation uh, migrants, but also the first, the, the, the offshoots or the first generation migrants. And during this pandemic, under the auspices of the African Union, Caribbean countries were admitted to use the African Medical Supplies Platform to help them acquire COVID-19 supplies under the African Union's the whole of Africa approach to such procurement. Our present bank helped develop the platform and supports those CARICOM countries who are making procurements through the platform. Your Excellency, why the slave trade was devastating to our continent? Why many of our brothers and sisters left and are still leaving our continent for greater pastures, for greener pastures? There is an opportunity to reverse the capital flow using innovative mechanisms. With technology, a person can contribute no matter where he or she may be. The challenge before us 
is to ensure we do not waste the opportunity. I therefore invite Fidelity Bank and other diaspora focused institutions to join forces with us to harness the opportunities offered by the African diaspora. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. Rama. Thank you very much. Rama never disappoints with those amazing pointers and recommendations. And, and just in case at this point you're wondering, just how can I fit in? What is available for me? I'd like you to take a look at this video. When you wish some things could feel like you're back at home, easy access to the local kiosk, fish pepper soup hangouts with the guys at sunset, fresh granite and frosted plantains to snack on in the middle of the day, and of course, seamless banking that suits your lifestyle. Well, thank goodness the Fidelity Diaspora account offers you the comfort of banking and keeping up with your finances back in Nigeria from wherever you are in the world. It's what we like to call home away from home. <laughs> with a Fidelity Diaspora account, you get to enjoy complete value home and abroad. And there's more. You can have access to Diaspora Mud Gauge, high yield on your US dollar investment, withdraw cash from anywhere in the world with your Naira debit card and US dollar debit card, transfer funds easily to any bank account in Nigeria, track your banking activity in real time via internet banking and other digital banking channels, 247 access to a dedicated customer service support. It's easy, fast, safe and convenient. Simply visit www.fidelitybank.ng to open a Fidelity Diaspora account today. I can promise you that doesn't take much time. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, now, when you meet a man who has two doctoral and four master's degree, including a PhD in electrical and computer engineering from Johns Hopkins University, USA, and an MBA from the University of Calabar, Nigeria, then you know that you are in for a very special treat. Now, I'm talking about our next speaker, Professor Undubisi Ekekwe, a Nigerian inventor, engineer, author, and entrepreneur. He is the founder of First Atlantic Semiconductors and Microelectronics, which is West Africa's leading embedded systems company. He invented and patented a robotic system, which was later acquired by the US government. Professor Kekwe has also held professorships in Carnegie Mellon University mm. and Babcock University. His working experience includes Analog Devices Core, where he co-designed a generation accelerometer for the iPhone and created the company's first wafer level chip scale package for the inertial sensor. You know what, in plain English, let me just break this down to you. If you're using an iPhone right now, then Rest assured that Professor Ikekwe is part of that success story. So, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with me a true genius, Professor Ndubisi Ikekwe. <clears throat> So, thank you so much, uh, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's quite a moment and a great privilege to have this opportunity of speaking before you all in this capacity. Thank you so much, Fidelity Bank, for the moment. Thank you for what you stand for our beautiful nation and our economy. I want to also stand on existing protocol recognizing the Vice President of our nation, represented here, the Central Bank Governor of a beautiful country, and my co uh, guest speakers here. So I will have a conversation here. I've titled it, The New CBN Forest Policy, The Path to $2 trillion GDP. I don't know if I can share my slide, just about, uh, about four slides, if it's possible, I can share a slide. Uh, is it possible, I mean, for me to share this slide, please? Or it's not? OK, great. So thank you so much. So. Um, Okay, great. So call it the new CBN forest policy, the path to 
two trillion dollar GDP for Nigeria. And of course, we know that we are not there at the moment, but looking at the redesigns at the trajectory, I do believe vividly that Nigeria should be a $2 trillion economy today. So to begin this, I'll take you back a little bit to history. If you go back more than 2000 years of GDPs around nations, I have using the GDP of, uh, I'm using the GDP of China and the GDP of United States of America for illustrative purpose here. So what you see here is that before 1600, the GDPs of China and the GDP of United States of America, both of them we are largely flat. And if you look at the gross world products, aggregate of all GDPs on earth, then everything was flat. The implication was that the, the GDP was not growing, the economies were not growing. And just like that, the per capita income was actually decelerating. So because if you divide the GDP in a growing population over time, it means that a generation of people are getting poorer across generations because the population was increasing even when GDP was not appreciated. So that was the time, if you remember back in your secondary school biology class or your secondary school agricultural science class, there was a man called Reverend Martins. He came with this postulation that the world population was growing geometrically while the food production was growing in arithmetic progression. In other words, if that comes for us to continue, a time will come when man or woman, of course, will starve to death. But something started happening around here, just at the birth of America. The GDP of the United States started moving in an exponential form, and China later on started that party. Unfortunately, not all parts of the world we are able to connect into this rapid translation from a largely flattened GDP into one that became exponential in growth. To a large extent, our beautiful nation, Nigeria, is still tethered to this flattened GDP. And GDPs that are in that constructs as societies of inventions and societies that do not have innovation. But the GDPs of nations that have shown these exponential capabilities are nations that have innovation. So what is an inventive society? An inventive society is a society of ideas. Everyone has an idea how to fix electricity in Nigeria. Everyone has an idea how to provide pipe on water in my village in Abia. Everyone knows all the solutions, but wait for the next week, wait for the next month, wait for the next year, no product or service available in the market. So in the Bia Palos, in Molwe Parks, people are talking about solutions to Nigeria, solutions for Nigeria, but you can't find dog solutions for you to make use of them. So what is happening here is that Nigeria has the characteristics of an inventive society, a society of largely more ideas without products or services. So the question here is this, how do we transition from an inventive nation to an innovation nation? Because it's only when we can do that, that is the time our GDP will not begin to ramp up to accommodate the population growth that we are seeing in a beautiful country. So in this conversation here, <clears throat> I want to believe that the diaspora, the people that we have actually invested, most of them, we gave them free scholarship in universities in Nigeria. We subsidize their education. And as soon as they graduate, Well, Dr. Okokwe, we seem to have lost you. Are you there? Okay. Uh, we'll definitely get him back, but I mean, he was building up really well, trying to detail what has happened over 2,000 years. I, I never knew those data existed. Well, that's what you get from someone with two doctorals. So we'll get Dr. Kukwe back, uh, definitely. But you could just take some time, take a look at that slide. I mean, 26 states, no FDI. Adamawa had just $20,000 to make the 11. So it's building up. And the interesting part is that we will be transitioning to the 
Q&A segment. And Rotus, of course, is standing by. We'll be keeping uh, Dr. Kekwe definitely amongst the panelists just to uh, you know, get his ideas, pick his brains. It's not every day you get to sit down uh, with someone like that. So Rotus will be handling that segment very soon. We have over a hundred, you know, conversations in our Q and A, and I trust that you have dropped those questions. So we will be taking a look at those questions, getting answers to those questions. I know it's it's a new terrain, so there are a lot of questions to be asked. But rest assured, stay right there, be relaxed, because those questions would be answered. We have more than capable hands and brains, I should say, to handle those your questions. And as you should know, we enjoy, you know, sending those chocolates, those quotes and others, but more importantly, we enjoy those investments. So ladies and gentlemen, stand by. Can you hear me now, please? Hello? Yes, yes, we can. Go ahead. Please go ahead. I'm so sorry. I, I can't understand okay, what happened. It's okay. We understand. Yeah. It is. Okay. So as I was trying to explain here that the key thing here, can you hear me? Yes, please. Go ahead. Perfect. Okay. Sorry about that. So the challenge here is how do we transition from this inverted society into an innovation society? And one of the key elements of doing that is looking at capital, which is a very critical element when you look at the factors of production. Now, a nation, Nigeria has knowledge. I mean, there are very brilliant people in the country. So from that angle, we have some of the most fundamental rudiments necessary for us to now move from that inventive society to an innovation society. Then we are is also that entrepreneurial capitalism. Across the nation, we have young people who are risk takers, who can actually take us into that mountain top. If we give them the necessary capabilities and things they need to make that translation. So we saw when the National Bureau of Statistics reported that out of 26, Country, out of the 36 uh, states we have in the nation, that 26 of them did not report any foreign direct investment. In short, Adamawa State was included as one of the states in the nation that had a foreign direct investment. And what did they do to qualify for that? Adamawa State received $20,000 as foreign direct investment in the year 2020. So you see that even the foreign direct investments may not necessarily be the path to that innovation society. So diaspora capital, a concatenation of that remittance and diaspora investment is something I believe vividly that was very critical for our nation to see how we can bring that knowledge we have, bring that entrepreneurial capitalism, the spirit we can do what we want to do and galvanize it together, and then we can build a beautiful country that we want. So coming into that, the new CBM policy is very, very catalytic. It's a very brilliant policy because it has removed the information asymmetry, which was usually the case. If you send in $1,000, by the time you are paid in Naira, you've lost a lot through the exchange rates. But the CBM has brought something that is safer and something that is also simpler. And it's going to open up a new vista that many people will now use the formal instruments for them to now send money into the beautiful country. So, but that is not just going to be the only thing we need as a country. Because if you look at it very well, you see that Nigeria exports 
some of his best products, our young people. So we have very brilliant people that Nigeria sparks very brilliant young people as of the nation. And if you look at the growth trajectory we had in early 1960s, my model says that Nigeria should be a three trillion dollar by now, but we are less than around less than 500 billion. In other words, we are off by more than 1.5 trillion. So our paralysis started around 1970s, late 1970s, when this trajectory of people leaving the country, including myself, unfortunately left. So the question is this, how can we, at the moment, according to PricewaterCoopers, I think they said that in 2018, Nigeria received about $23 billion. I still believe that that number is very low, that we could actually be hitting about 23 billion, looking at 1.5 trillion that we have lost as a result of that migration that has been taking place in the nation. So the one thing there is this, Nigeria is just looking at $23 billion that will come into the country. But there are also other things that are happening. You know, I just gave an example. I have a patent with the US government acquired. They're going to use it in this space. No one is going to capture that as a contribution to Nigeria. I went to Futo. I actually attended university in Nigeria, largely free. But right here, the best of the work I'm doing it's America that is capturing that value. Then you now go into some senior fellows of, of Nigerian origin in NASA, in some of the finest companies in America. By the time you look at the aggregate and the composite of these elements, you see that Nigeria is not capturing any value from the diaspora. The 23 billion we think we are getting is absolutely nothing. So what, what are we going to do for that? So the CBN has done extremely well. Banks like Fidelity Bank, it's working extremely well to push these things. But I want us to go back to a construct that we use in startups. You know, I have about 15 startups I've invested in Lagos, in Nigeria generally. And there is something we do. We call it the one oasis and the double play strategy. In other words, in any business, you need to look for your best products. In any market, you need to look for your best products. And just like when you go into a desert, you have the oasis where the life of that particular inhabitant surrounds. The young people that are going into the United States, going to Canada, they remain some of the finest the nation is giving the world. So the question here is how do we capture value from them? And that is going to be a most exciting thing. So, my point is this, how do we move from just waiting for them passively to remit $1,000, remit $2,000 to actively encouraging them by actually going wherever they are in order to make sure that they are not just passively dropping the little they don't need, but actually making decisions that they can invest in building the new nation. So I saw something like Diaspora Growth Nation Fund. It is something where the government will say, I am going to lose immediate benefits in order for us to have the capacity to actually build the nation. Because if we do not have capital, Nigeria cannot transition from that inventive society to innovation society, because capital is very critical for us to build the necessary things we need as a nation. You know, when we look at our standard of living, people can say things are not the way we would have wanted them to be. But you look at it, South Africa's budget is about 100 and something billion dollars, and South Africa has a population of 60 million people. Nigeria's budget is around 35 billion, and we are three times the size of South Africa. So in other words, most of our challenges are actually capital related. So if we can find a mechanism how we can unlock more capital is going to be very critical. So how can we do that? I say that the diaspora offers us a very credible path how we can bring more capital into, into the country. So one thing here could be, just like Fidelity Bank is doing, if somebody invests through their system and the government will say over five years, over 10 years, any dividends or any exit from that business, we don't have to pass it. We just make it largely free for you. You don't have to pay any tax on it. 
So by doing such, the government can now incentivize people to take conscious efforts as a diaspora to actually invest in the country. I do believe that if we do that, we can add an extra $60 billion on top of the 23 or so that we are receiving. And if extra $60 billion comes into the country, I promise you that things will begin to ramp up very, very well in the country. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is just because I know that the time is very short, so I have to constrain this talk. Thank you. We have the ability, and I do believe that remittance offers us that promise, but we just have to take an active role to make sure that people living outside the nation can partner with those in the, at the home team of very, very, very bold people so that we can build a country that we, all of us are expecting to build in Nigeria. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you, Professor Ikekwe. For thank, breaking thank you, that Professor Ikekwe. Thank you very much. Absolutely. The pathway to $2 trillion GDP for Nigeria. So he has basically shown us the way. Well, let's get started. Speaking of that, Fidelity Bank PLC, of course, has opportunities for you that you can leverage on to build this $2 trillion GDP for Nigeria. Why don't you take a look? Banking in Nigeria from the diaspora is as easy as picking up your phone. Because once that's done, your access to multiple offerings for Fidelity Diaspora Banking is granted. Open a Fidelity Diaspora account on fidelitybank.ng and enjoy peace of mind while living abroad. We are Fidelity. We keep our word. Well, that can be you actually chilling in that dream apartment. Why? Just because you bank with Fidelity Bank PLC. We are Fidelity. We keep our word. Now, it's time for a segment I'm particularly excited about, really. We've heard from amazing speakers, the Vice President, the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, the MD CEO of Fidelity Bank PLC, the head of Nightcom, and so much more but this is a time to rob minds so ladies and gentlemen it is time for the panel segment and i have a capable hand to handle that Rota sodiri my co-host it's up to you now take us away thank you so much uh Kaede, Kaede. excellent stuff great to be here again at the diaspora webinar series inaugural from fidelity bank we've of course heard from professor uh undubisi uh, uh, and now we're also going to be introducing our other panelists once more i'm rosa sodiri i host the global business report on arise tv it's great to be here once more uh so um professor wale suleiman is uh one of our panelists and i want to tell you about him right now professor wale suleiman is an accomplished uh, neurosurgeon and researcher. Uh, he's a skilled physician, executive, and leader, a philanthropist, and a successful entrepreneur. In recognition of his career exploits and meticulous services in Canada, he was conferred the Distinguished Canadian Citizen Award in 2019 by the Nigerian Canadian Association of Calgary, the NCAC. He founded, designed, and managed one of the most comprehensive multidisciplinary back and spine centers in the United States and transformed the Oster Department of Neurosurgery and neurosciences from a two-person, get this, two-person practice in the US uh, News and World Report to a top 25 
neuro pro, neuroscience program in the United States. Incredible growth there. He's been involved in neurosurgery and spine surgeries in Nigeria and was appointed the special advisor on health matters uh, to the Kwara state government from 2019 to 2020. So very much looking forward to hear from Professor Wally Suleiman. Uh, to the entertainment sector, um, Mr. Uh, Alistair Shoyode. Uh, he is the founder of Bright Entertainment Network, Ben TV, the first and longest running African and Caribbean focused television channel in the United Kingdom. He's educated in Nigeria and the United Kingdom, 15 years experience in business development management, uh, a European chairman of the uh, Nigeria's in diaspora uh, organization as the NIDO, which was set up by the government in 2000 to unite Nigerians overseas with a, a, a zeal to developing the nation from, from the diaspora. So of course, inclusive, of course, of course, we've already heard from uh, Professor Undubisi uh, Ekekwe. So that, those are our panelists, very, very eager um, to get into um, this discussion right now. So of course, um, Professor Ekekwe, I want to start uh, with you. We just heard uh, your very, very, very illustrative speech. My first question to you is, you've been known to invest in about, I believe it's uh, 33 companies in four continents. And you mentioned the number of startups you had um, in Lagos as well, which is in, the, in multiple teams. What, in your opinion, is driving the performance of Nigerian investments. For example, uh, the stock exchange, 50% return, the Nigerian stock exchange last year, one of the best returns uh, across the world. What exactly do you think is your experience is the driving factor and the attraction of the Nigerian investment space? Uh, Professor Ekekwe, the floor is yours. Yeah, so thank you so much. I think the most important element here is that the problems are still there. Provided the problems have not been solved, it has to be solved. So if the problems are still there, anyone that figures out a solution is the guy that is going to go and take over the customer. So when we look at the challenges in the nation and you could figure out a pathway that you can go and solve that problem. And if you are very successful in fixing that friction, you win the prize. So I think that is the incentive why people are investing locally. And, and across most sectors, sectors. You could see that fintech is very strong, logistics is also there, the health tech sector, even in agriculture. So Nigeria has so many paralysis that any sector you pick, there is something you will like if your mind is actually very open. Because there are people that cannot see that even right there where they are, there are golds and diamonds and that they can actually tap. It's just like what happened in Paystack. A lot of people did not believe that somebody could create within five years a $200 million business in Nigeria. But these guys did not pick that memo and they went ahead and started that business. There was a startup I invested in November last year. Last week, they raised money at $7.2 million. So these guys were able to, uh, to grow value of $7.2 million in less than seven months or so. So there are latent opportunities in Nigeria, but you just have to believe and go and actually untap them. Mm. So much for that, uh, Professor Undubisi Ekekwe, for that answer there. Professor Wallace uh, Suleiman, I want to come to you. You're a proud diaspora account holder of Fidelity Bank. You've invested in uh, healthcare. You're, of course, the chairman, CEO and chairman of RNZ Global Limited. What would be, or what would a diaspora investor looking at Nigeria have to consider uh, before putting uh, their money where their mouth is and investing in Africa's largest economy? In your opinion, uh, Professor Wally Suleiman. Yeah, thank you very much. This has been a very um, enlightening uh, program. Thank you, Fidelity, for putting this together. I think um, I'll be remiss if I don't mention some housekeeping stuff. So I've been, I'm one of those people that have actually returned to Nigeria. I haven't lived abroad for almost 30 years. I was doing well in my career as a neurosurgeon, as an academician, but I think coming back to Nigeria is one of the best decisions I've ever made. And I say that, but before I get into the details of your question, I think there's some housekeeping stuff that everybody that's this 3.1 thousand people, if you're thinking of coming back to Nigeria, there's some housekeeping stuff you need to do. And the first one is your accommodation. They sound, they sound very, very simple, but things that you need to make sure you make you comfortable when you're here. So 
accommodation, your vehicles, making sure you have enough savings that will last you three to five years so that you're not coming to a market desperate and not thinking through it. And then making sure that you reconnect your network in Nigeria, the people you went to school with, reconnect to them, and then define how you're going to add value to the society. You have to define your niche and how you're going to add value to the society. And then I think one of the common mistakes we make, before we all went overseas, we plan to understand how things work where we were going. Why do the same thing when you're coming back here? Plan, 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 and apply the same amount of vigor, energy, and focus to be able to do what you need to do. So I think what we are, what we are, and that's exactly part of our strategy here. We have to be solution oriented. Instead of remitting money to be able to for somebody for feed, why don't why don't you remit your money to be project oriented, to be innovation, to, to fund innovation, to be able to actually. So when you look at the situation in Nigeria, when I used to come to Nigeria, just as a last one, when you used to come to Nigeria, when I'm flying into Lagos and you look at the view you see, you're like, oh my God, where do you start? Which is glass half empty. But when I see that Lagos now, I see there's a lot of opportunities here. There's a lot of people that need something. Are you going to key into it and provide a solution to what they need? And you have to rethink how you put your finances together to actually align with what is possible in the country, not to import ideas from overseas. I'll stop there for now. Uh, Wale Suleiman, uh, talking about keying into opportunities. I want to piggyback on that answer and come to uh, Mr. Alistair uh, Shoyode. Uh, Mr. Shoyode, we just heard Professor Wale Suleiman talking about keying into opportunities, looking at being glass half full when flying into Lagos and looking at the landscape. So based on that, I want to ask you, what about the entertainment sector? How are folks or how should folks in the diaspora be positioning themselves if they are viewing the entertainment sector in Nigeria, Nollywood and the like for investment? Mr. Shoyde, are you with us? Okay, we can. Mr. Shoyde, can you hear us? Are you with us? Well, if I get your question right, uh, what we need to do, uh, those in the diaspora in some of entertainment. Am I on the right question? Correct, yes. So as far as the entertainment sector is, is concerned, what should the diaspora be looking at based on the opportunities that are there in your view? Well, thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to be on this summit. Uh, wonderful speakers. And thank you very much for our chairman and our CEO, MD. And there is no doubt that the entertainment industry really has been the catalyst of exposing Nigeria to the global community. Uh, it is good what the African uh, CEO mentioned about even having a fund and creative uh, funding for people going into the movie industry and being creative and innovative. So showing sure, you know, up the Nigerian capacity, especially in Europe or in the diaspora, we have a tremendous opportunity. People like uh, 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 top producers that have been producing wonderful movies and creating story that the world needs to know. But I think it is very important as well to recognize that Africa as a whole and Nigeria being the leading nation on the African continent, we need to do more in terms of creative awareness in marketing the nation to the global community. And now what we have seen is many nations will be looking inward into supporting their country's face before exposing and giving more grant to other nations. And it is a pleasure, of course, to be on the Fidelity Summit because actually I have been working with Fidelity from a distance. I've uh, attended some of the summit, especially on, on empowering youth in the country from Kebi State to Anambra State and that initiative. Okay, we're having a bit, we can definitely, I can I hear where uh, Mr. Shoyade is going, talking about the initiatives and the opportunities here. I think he just mentioned Kepi State and a number of different states in Nigeria where he's, you know, looked and seen opportunities. So I think I can, I've had a little bit of a sound issue there, but I can definitely hear where uh, Mr. Shoyade is going. So thank you so much for that answer, uh, Mr. Shoyade. Uh, Professor Ekeko, I want to come back to you. Uh, in your, your um, presentation, you were talking about moving from an inventive 
society to, I believe, an innovative, innovative society. I, I want to ask you, Professor Ekekwe, how much education plays into that transition. Fidelity Bank, for example, has made education a cornerstone of their CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility Initiative. So just based on that, uh, Professor uh, Ekekwe, how much of a role does education play in getting Nigeria from the inventive over to the innovative society that you envision in that uh, um, presentation that you gave? Yeah, so of course, uh, education is very, very important. Uh, it's a very, very uh, catalytic element. Can you have, so education is very, very important. If you go back to that slide, I had knowledge as one of the elements necessary for us to have that translation. So to move from that inventive society to innovation society, you need knowledge. And whenever a country has the capacity to develop, acquire, and deploy knowledge, that country does well. The time of Egypt, Pharaoh was known as a man who was very knowledgeable. I mean, Egypt was the, 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 the pioneer of modern civilization. And Egypt, the Pharaoh had the best astrologers and the best thinkers. From that, you went to the time of the Babylonians, to the time of the Roman Empire. What you see there, you can see that people were accumulating knowledge. And that accumulation of knowledge was very critical for them to advance as a people. Even the, the time of the Greek Empire, as they were writing those things on philosophy and logic, the Mediterranean Sea from Coast Ireland, you see the shipping lines they were building. So a nation cannot develop faster than its educational capability. So for Nigeria to advance from an inventive society to innovation society, Nigeria needs to have the capacity to accumulate knowledge and actually apply that knowledge. And just to say it simply here, there is no just shortcut because the people that live during the inventive society one thing there, they were actually brilliant people. The, the, the constructs we have today in physics and mathematics and chemistry, the fundamental elements, the people that created them died very poor. But what, where the capital comes in is that this guy is smart. He is a PhD graduate. He is very knowledgeable. He has gone to school, not necessarily a university, but a vocational school, or maybe the Igbo apprentice system. No matter what it is, there is knowledge being acquired. Does that person have capital to move from talking of an idea into creating product and service in the marketplace? So that capital is the instrument to do the translation from invention to innovation. So it has nothing to do with you are a smart guy. You could be a very brilliant person, but that does not end it. It has to do, do you have a product in the market that people can buy? If a society cannot produce those products and services, that society is nothing but an inventive society. For me, I have an equation. Innovation is equals to invention plus commercialization. If you have not commercialized it to fix a friction which exists in the market, it is not innovative. It's only when it's solving people's problem, that is the time you can baptize it with innovation. And that's what Nigeria needs. It's not just going to university, it's not just going to polytechnic. It could actually be learning from somebody going to a vocational school, but that knowledge must be supported with capital for us to have that translation from invention to innovation. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that, uh, Professor Unduvisi Ekekwe. Innovation is equal to invention plus com uh, commercialization. Very, very, very apt there. Um, Professor Wale Suleban, I want to come back uh, to you. We're here because of partly of because Fidelity Bank is creating a link from the diaspora to Nigeria. You talked about uh, spending over 30 years overseas and then coming back here. Can you talk about patient capital for all the, the diasporans that are overseas that are looking to invest in Nigeria through the links provided by uh, financial institutions like Fidelity Bank? How important is this for capital to be patient? Uh, Professor Wale Suleiman. Yeah, thank you very much. And, uh... I think uh, uh, Prof actually summarized it, you know, you could have the best ideas, but if you're not adding value, I think it's a matter of creating value and then forming partnerships so that you can actually have access, you can, you can convince the people that are going to provide the funds to buy into your idea and see how it's going to be valuable to the society, it's going to be challenging. So I think, so that partnership with Fidelity Bank or any other uh, financial institution is critical. Uh, but you have to understand we operate in an environment where everybody is very skeptical 
And you know, we are very, very, there's very plus, very, very small amount of data to be able to actually create a, a very good financial modeling. So a lot of effort needs to go into making the case, making the case again, and also actually getting some local data to convince the people you want to partner with that this is a very viable project. Because uh, there's some information saying people, for instance, I'll give you the issue of uh, healthcare tourism, medical tourism. There's a lot of numbers out there that say, oh, people, uh, $2 billion has been spent for medical tourism. Most of those numbers are validated. So until you come on ground and you actually know the reality, I, I have a clinical practice. I, I'm an educator entrepreneur. I run RNZ Global for hospital management. It's actually more challenging than that. Now, if you now turn it upside down and say, okay, what are the things that people are looking for? How can I be a solution oriented provider? Right? And that's where you begin to solve problems. And also your financial modeling needs to reflect reality on the ground. So let's say, for instance, you want to go and open a diagnosis center in the United States and maybe a CT scan is $2,000. Nobody can afford that here. So you have to now look at how you can remodel, you can re remodel your finances to make sure a key into what people can afford and how you can become very lean and improve your processes and be very cost effective. So that people that can afford it can actually you increase your volume to be able to be more profitable. So, but you can't do all of that by yourself. The partnership with financial institutions, they can help you through the processes. They can look at key areas, how you start, so that if, you, if you're gonna fail, you fail fast. And if you want, you're gonna be successful, you have partners behind you that are actually flagging things to you before you get into trouble. So, but you, you can't have that patience. That's why I started with the housekeeping stuff. You can't have that patience if you don't take care of the housekeeping stuff, because it's a very slow process. I have to, there's something I talk about which is playing to win or playing not to lose. You have to come with a mindset into Nigeria with playing to win. You can't come into this environment playing not to lose. If you're playing not to lose, every single obstacle you have, every single challenge you have, you want to get out. You find excuses to want to be able to bail out. But if you're playing to win, every obstacle is an opportunity to improve. Every failure is an opportunity to do it better next time. So I think, but through all of that, I think when you look at, when you look at healthcare, the, for instance, if you look at equipment gaps, infrastructure gap, you look at um, manpower gap, you could say, well, Nigerian healthcare is very bad. Or you could say, there's a lot of opportunities in Nigerian healthcare because there's a need, there's lots of needs. Now, the challenge is how do you make it business, viable business-wise? So that's, those are some of the things that I think Partner with uh, a financial institution will help you to be able to think through, especially if you don't have entrepreneurial uh, experience. Thank you. So much, Professor Wale Suleiman, for that in-depth answer. I've got time for one more question. Uh, uh, Mr. Alistair Shoyede, I want to bring you, I don't want to limit our, my questions to you to just entertainment. You have investments in uh, sports, technology, uh, consumer goods, uh, industrial property, and so on. Uh, uh, Mr. Shoyede, What's your advice for diasporans looking to come into Nigeria as far as investment is concerned? I'll give you the last word on that. So this is why we have to be patient, you see? Technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's okay. Okay, I'll try. I'll take that question again. Of course, uh, your comment is well noted about patience with technology. Um, I mean, uh, Mr. Alistair, show you there. I was asking. You're not just in known for the entertainment sector. You are investments in uh, sports, technology, consumer goods. My question to you was, what should diasporans be looking at? What's your advice to diasporans looking to invest uh, in in Nigeria, Mr. Show you there. Uh, Professor uh, Ekekwe, I'll end with you. Um, there's been discussions around the Diaspora Investment Fund, uh, Professor Ekekwe. How do you think that would work? Okay, I, I think just setting up a pure fund without major incentives may not necessarily bring that catalytic impact that we are hoping. I do believe vividly that if you set up a fund that can get independently from a venture capital firm or private equity firm, 
nothing will happen. So the point here is, can government go the extra stay by saving? If you are bringing $10,000 and you may have a dividend or there is an exit in any entity that that money is invested in, over five or 10 years, you don't have to pay tax or you pay 50% of the associated tax. By having those incentives, uh, the animalistic spirit of entrepreneurial capitalism will now start germinating in everybody. So people will now say, okay, I have $20,000 in my bank account in New York, but if I can take this money to Nigeria and it generates money, that's money because even the profit part is not going to be taxed. So the fund just alone without incentive, I don't think is going to unlock the opportunity. So it's more of what you see in Israel, in uh, what you see in the United States. The US most times will do one thing. If you are a very rich man, you have made $1, billion, $1 million in a year. And now the government will say your tax rate, let's say is 25%. But if you take $100,000 out of the 1 million and make a donation to a university, it moves you into a, another tax bracket which possibly will make your tasks very, very lower. So by stopping a rich man from giving money away in the United States, we are punishing him because he can't save money. So that is why they are very, very generous. So you see a man donating money to a school, they are very good. It's not that they don't, it's not that, it's not that he's donating that money because he likes the school. He's donating the money because by donating to the school, he's also saving money somewhere. But the US government is very happy with it. So can Nigeria now, as a policy, say, okay, if this diaspora come, I am going to lose money, possibly. But if I give them that opportunity, that will help us to create more value over a long time for the nation. So instead of receiving 23 billion, we can unlock 90 billion. And that 90 billion will have a multiplier effect that will be very bigger in the country. Because we have said, we are not going to tax you. We are not going to pay all these things. And then people will be very interested in. I think those are the things that we need to do, not just setting up another fund that is absolutely has no difference from what is already in existence. I want to see the anchors, just the way they do it in India, just the way they do it in, in Israel, that will motivate me to make that decision over other alternatives. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Undubisi Ekekwe. Also, our uh, thanks to Professor uh, Wale Suleiman and also to Mr. Uh, Alistair Shoyode. Uh, very, very illustrative, very, very informative answers that we should could continue. Or have to we get pressed for time, have to push forward. So thank you, gentlemen, for a very, very informative panel discussion. Again, at this inaugural Diaspora webinar series brought to you all uh, by Fidelity Bank. Now, uh, there's a lot of questions still coming in at the Q&A box. Of one, a lot of those questions are about the products and services that Fidelity Bank is offering the Nigerians and the diaspora. Let's take a look at those right now.
Fidelity Bank keeping their word, of course, as always. This is the inaugural Diaspora webinar series brought to you by Fidelity Bank. Now for his closing remarks, I'm going to bring in uh, the acting chief digital officer, Mr. Richard Madiego, for his remarks. Thank you very much, Rotus. Um, thank you. This, this is actually very, very, um, and it's, it's just an enlightening situation. It's an enlightening uh, program. Uh, we just want to share some nuggets before we, we give our closing remarks. A couple of things that uh, Prof said, uh, Professor Ekekwe, uh, which we would also like to just um, elucidate on. There are latent opportunities in Nigeria, but you just have to believe. I think just encapsulates everything that we want to say. Um, so based on uh, everything that has been discussed, there are areas we just want to touch on and also let um, our diasporans, you know, go with those uh, things as food for thought. Uh, the first is on the fixed income area. What we have seen is that um, a lot of investments that come into Nigeria basically uh, come in as uh, you know deposits money market uh, but we've also seen that there are opportunities for the diasporans in uh, federal government bonds federal government savings bonds you can invest as little as 5000 naira in your federal government uh, uh, savings bonds the treasury bills and uh, non government bonds so the law allows uh, you know private entities to actually raise money uh, Fidelity has a bond issuance currently of 41.2 billion naira. So these are areas that you could come in and uh, do business in Nigeria. In the capital market, um, uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the moderators, uh, Rotus, just said uh, capital market returned 50% uh, last year, one of the best in the world. But it's one of the uh, most hidden secrets in Nigeria. That is an area that we want to let the diasporans know. A lot of them have invested in the capital market. Um, it's highly liquid, and there are opportunities both in the in capital gains, so these uh, shares would um, appreciate in value, and in dividend payments. Nigeria is one of the most, uh, you know, uh, potentially best uh, uh, investment spots for your capital market investment. Now for real estate, this is an area that we are very interested in. Uh, about five years ago, we introduced what, uh, what we call the diaspora mortgage to diaspora professionals across the world. And it has been a huge success. Now we've had that um, running for five years. And uh, basically the way it runs, it is tied to FICO. Your FICO scores, Fair Isaac Corporation. And you are able to access these loans for upwards of 10 years at between 9% to 12%. So maybe it's slightly higher than what you would get um, overseas, but uh, be mostly better than what you will get in Nigeria. So that is an area we would want you to also look at. Come and invest at home. We just um, did uh, uh, showed some videos uh, that you can also uh, take home. The Victoria Crest Estate, it's a lovely estate. It's something that you, you probably look at um, uh, investing in. It's one, of, it's one of our partners and we, we, we know that it's it's uh, one of several estates within Nigeria that you can invest in. In the agri and export area, um, one of the things about Nigeria that people do not realize is that Nigeria is a vast expanse of land, 923,677 square kilometers with 200 million people. So a lot of opportunities in the agro and allied uh, space is available to you. I mean, for most of us um, that have never lived in Nigeria, that is information for you. For those that have left from here to, to the US, I mean, I'm sure you know that uh, the agri space used to be the major force in Nigerian um, uh, uh, capital, uh, this thing, in Nigerian GDP. Right now, we want to bring that back. And a lot of um, good um, companies and capital is available for you. So you need to come back with your expertise and with your capital, and you, you are able to invest in this, um, this space and export some of this, uh, the produce. Finally, on the bank deposits. Now, other investment opportunities around um, investment in bank deposits in savings. Uh, Fidelity Bank, as a bank, has introduced what we call the Global Edge. Now, the Global Edge is an investment product. 
that enables you invest at home and earn up to 5% interest returns uh, for uh, tenors of between 250 to $500,000 over a period of one year. So those are uh, uh, investment uh, vehicles that we have introduced and um, have been accessed by several diasporans across the world. The commercial papers, the commodity trading and mutual funds are also areas that you could look in and uh, invest. We'll provide the advisory, we'll provide the guidance and we will handhold you. We know that Nigeria is a big place. Some of you haven't been back home for a while. We were able to provide that guidance. And um, with that, I would go to my closing remarks. Thank you for um, tuning in. On behalf of the board and management of Fidelity Bank, we wish to appreciate everybody that has taken time off their busy schedules to attend this inaugural diaspora webinar. We wish to appreciate most profoundly our vice president, Professor Yemi Oshiba Adun, ably represented by Mrs. Yewande Sadiku, Director General of the Nigerian Investment Promotion Council. We also wish to appreciate our indefatigable central bank governor, Mr. Godwin Emefiele. We appreciate your taking time out of your very busy schedule to address us on these policies and their implications to our burgeoning diaspora community. Thank you very much, sir. So uh, diasporans, you now know that when you uh, remit money into Nigeria, you have five Naira for every dollar. So that is good incentive for you. We extend our felicitations to the Chairman CEO of Nigeria's in Diaspora Commission, Nightcom, Honorable Abike Dabiri Erewa for attending and delivering a goodwill message to her constituents, the diasporans. To all the speakers, Professor Benedict Okeorama, President of Afrexin Bank, Professor Ndubisi Ekekwe, Professor Olawale Sulaiman, Diaspora Neurosurgeon, and Mr. Alistair Soyo, the CEO of Ben TV. We extend our most profound gratitude. To our audience, the global diaspora community, and our customers and friends back home, we say thank you for tuning in. We hope that your time with us has been worthwhile. For us, the conversation has only just commenced. We will continue to extend this through our channels as we seek to drive interest in investments back home. As they say, let the conversations continue. Till we meet again, we say God bless fidelity, God bless the federal government of Nigeria, and God bless our diasporans. Thank you very much. All right. Right, I can hear I can hear the applause. I can hear the applause. The applause is deserved. The applause, of course, to the acting chief digital officer, uh, Mr. Richard Madiagbo. Thank you so much for those comments. Applause to everybody that has been a part of this historic diaspora webinar series brought to uh, you by Fidelity Bank. I've been fun being a part of this. I really enjoyed the panel's discussion. I wish we could have gone on longer. So looking forward to the next uh, uh, webinar series from Fidelity Bank. I am once again Rotus Odiri, uh, host of the Global Business Report on Arise TV. Kaya, it's been fun doing this with you. Oh, absolutely. I believe when Mr. Madi said he would meet again, he's referring to a second diaspora webinar series. So we look forward to that. We look forward to doing business with you at Fidelity Bank. And just before we go, quick thank you to the team behind the scenes. Yes, there's an amazing team behind the scenes. We have Ose, Vidal, and the rest of them. You've done a great job. Fantastic job. Oh, we hate to go, right? Oh, but we have thank to go, you. right? We have to go. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dash parents. Thank you, my customers. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Ma. Bye-bye. <laughs>
our fidelity. We keep our word. There are times when you're abroad and you wish some things could feel like you're back at home. Easy access to the local kiosk, fish pepper soup hangouts with the guys at sunset, fresh granite and roasted plantains to snack on in the middle of the day, and of course, seamless banking that suits your lifestyle. Well, thank goodness the Fidelity Diaspora account offers you the comfort of banking and keeping up with your finances back in Nigeria from wherever you are in the world. It's what we like to call home away from home. <laughs> with a Fidelity Diaspora account, you get to enjoy complete value home and abroad. And there's more. You can have access to Diaspora Mud Gauge, high yield on your US dollar investment, withdraw cash from anywhere in the world with your Naira debit card and US dollar debit card, transfer funds easily to any bank account in Nigeria, Track your banking activity in real time via internet banking and other digital banking channels. 247 access to a dedicated customer service support. It's easy, fast, safe, and convenient. Simply visit www.fidelitybank.ng to open a Fidelity Diaspora account today.